This episode of Dr. Drew After Dark is brought to you by Embark. I will tell you more about them a little bit later. Now let's get on with the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everybody, welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. She's Christina P. I'm Dr. Drew. The number is 818-253-1693, or you can give us your emails at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And we said last week we would start by talking about asymptomatic carriers. I'm very excited to get some of these TikToks and some oh. of these voice messages. And I see ICP on the board there. You love those guys. I love guys. those dudes. <laughs> Violent J and Shaggy, my buddies. How do you know their names? I know you know them. I don't know their names, but you'll see. I know them and yeah. I know them. Oh, oh, shit. Okay. I really want to go to the uh, gathering. You can eventually. <laughs> would I, you really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I there it was uh, violent J when I brought it up to him was very enthusiastic about it. Um, however, every other human I brought it up to was like, "Oh God, you'll not survive it. You don't do this." I wouldn't. And I mean, I've heard that people I, get Fago dumped on them. Oh, well, that's and... Fago does nothing. I'll, but I'll get a bottle over my head. It will <laughs> happen. But I, I like to go places I don't belong. Right. That's kind of my thing. This is kind look of at, where you this. are. Look yeah, you too. Uh, and so uh, it, it's a natural for me to go to the gathering. So if I could get the proper security, but everybody that I went there said like they needed like serious security. They're, Great. We'll set that up. Once the world is back, YMH will follow Dr. Drew. To Ohio. I think uh, to Nadav the has been with, uh, you've done this, right? Uh, I've been to an ICP show because of like it's that different. whole like uh, <laughs> sit, looking in. But Drew, going to the gathering is definitely a bucket list thing for me. So I will go with you. Right on. I will be your Right security. on. Will you, will you wear the mask? Will you wear some makeup? Oh my God. Fuck yeah. I mean, we need to go incognito, right? Yeah. I don't know. I see that's the thing. I think I may need to not go incognito so I don't mm. in say something wrong because oh. the worst thing you could do is be a poser. Well, oh. it's better to be safer safe than sorry, right? No, we'll, no, no. We'll put the no, clown no, no, makeup no. on if you. Just they'll sure. they'll test you. Like really? if you don't know the right answers, they'll beat you up. Oh shit. You're a poser. Yeah, you should go as so you. So I'm thinking go yeah. full Cuz you can't you're ignorant of it. I like, like really like with regalia, I'll wear a white coat. <laughs> surgical greens <laughs> i hear the lab coats are disease carriers we we can we have everything that carries disease with us because that's we spend our time in hospitals and abnormal bacteria grow and live in the hospital and they get on us Ugh. i since, since i i used to spend insane amounts of time in a hospital and for year decades i did that and towards the last like five years Every skin infection I got was just a catastrophe. I mean, mm. if I got a hangnail, it was just, Oh, because it would be infected yes. immediately yep. with whatever you yep. picked up. Gosh, yep. Yep. you guys yep. are so... Oh, there you go. There's oh, your buddy. Oh, now is this a... Now, this is not... I thought we were actually going to talk to Shaggy or Violent J. It does not look like we we're going to speak to one of the principals here. But <laughs> go ahead. Out here sweating the coronavirus. Oh, it is the Violent J. Sweating the coronavirus. I'm going to teach you a little trick right now. Everybody wants to go buy the toilet paper, the water, put on the little fucking Michael Jackson mask and whatnot. I'll show you how to defeat the coronavirus. Wait, first of all, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. What's the time with the Michael Jackson mask? Oh, uh, the the old the mask. Oh, like Michael Jackson yeah. wore. MJ and was by wearing... the way, uh, Violet J lost about seventy five pounds. This is, rec this is, is Shaggy right? too dope. This is not. This is a different J. guy. It's two guys, and this oh. is not the fat one. Really? Well, he's <laughs> yeah. wearing makeup. I mean, <laughs> wait a minute. Let's start from the beginning. Look, oh, this... he sounded like Violet J. Nah, this is Shaggy too. Okay, well then that makes sense. Out here sweating the coronavirus. Oh, you're right. It's Shaggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweating the coronavirus. Yeah, right. I'm gonna teach you a little trick yeah. right now. Sure, we should have recognized the makeup. The toilet paper, the water, put on the little fucking Michael Jackson mask, whatnot. I'll show you how to defeat the coronavirus. Check it out. Good old fashioned Ugh. dirt snow. God made dirt. Dirt don't hurt. Take out the rocks. And then it'll build your immune system. That's how you beat the fucking system. Mm. <laughs> well, what is I've it had sound? other people talk about eating dirt. That's keeping your way keep your immune system up. Well, that's is a, it? That's a time honored old uh, sort of uh, idea, and there's something to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm. It's not going to. I mean. It's like you have to, it's the sewer rat theory, right? Mm. That you expose yourself to lots of pathogens and build your immune system up. Well, it takes long, long, long Because toddlers, I mean, that's all babies and toddlers do is hand goes in dirt in the mouth, in the mouth, right. in the mouth. And, you know, I've heard that that's quite okay. They have to that's build. That's probably how we created peanut allergy and things. Mom's going, oh, no, no, yeah, no, no. It is the coddling of the American mm -hmm. mind. They talk about how peanut Jonathan allergies. Height. Yeah, because yeah. we took peanuts out of kids sites because uh, of fear of the allergy and then we created we probably we were probably fearful that they were going to choke on the peanuts or something yeah which is, there was a whole peanut choking thing went around one for a while. kid yeah I no know. i give my kids everything the minute they come Good. out nuts peanuts give up. super race <laughs> now 
But I, there is something to his idea of, um, you know, get get kids in preschool, get them together, spit in everyone's mouth, and everyone yeah. gets a chicken pox. Like, yeah. with the Rona, it's like, if my kid goes back to school, chances are he's bringing that shit home, because don't they bring it everything It doesn't home? transmit to kids very well. I like that. Yeah, and so this is the thing. I told you last week about the 2006 invention of lockdown. Mm. Well, that was built on a theory of influenza transmission amongst children. Children are the primary transmitter of influenza. Okay. So if you have an influenza outbreak, you close the schools down. It makes sense. Corona, the children don't get and don't transmit. Thank God. Very much. They have, Obviously, you'll hear in the press every time it does happen, but yeah. it's really very statistically uncommon. Praise Allah. And so, yeah, they aren't, gonna be, they aren't the asymptomatic carriers. The asymptomatic carriers are homeless people, <laughs> mm. strangely. Um, probably, you know, young, healthy people like the demonstrators. I bet a lot of those end up being asymptomatic carriers. And so they could be super spreaders. That's super the problem. Spreaders. But you're concerned that they don't transmit because you're well. not coughing and sneezing and stuff, right? Right. Doesn't it serve by reason? In my year studying as a medical yeah. doctor, yes, that of course. if you are, if you have a flu and you cough, well, that makes sense. You're, you're, you have it. You're showing symptoms right. and you're spreading yes. the symptom. Now, how does an asymptomatic person? Uh, we, one of the one of the worst places you could be is in a church singing. Okay. So speaking aloud with your mouth open will transmit. Okay. Okay. And a lot of the early transmission, like pre-symptomatic, before you get sick, is nose to nose. Mm. A lot of it's, you know, coming out the nose and going in the nose. So it's it's not just coughing and sneezing. It's just... It's, so rather it's... But the pre-symptomatics, you're yes. saying, is really where you're going to transmit yes, it. Yes, probably. Now, because I've heard stories of... Um, there's a heard a story. A friend of mine is a doctor. They tested positive. Uh, they're asymptomatic, and nobody in the family got it. Oh, interesting. How is that even possible? Is it he or she? It's a he. Huh, interesting. The doctor got it, and the wife, the children did not get it. And did he have any symptoms at all? No, asymptomatic, tested positive. I mean, positive totally asymptomatic. From what? I don't know. Very the story is secondhand, so I, do, I don't know. Very interesting. Right? Yeah, those are the ones. I, and, and your point, I think, is well taken, which is it's not. Thank you. It's not that easy to transmit. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, even when it does transmit, it usually transmits in the home mm. or in a transportation environment. Right. Train, elevator, that kind of thing. Airplane, but you I, say I'm no saying airplane, I'm not sure about the airplane. Good. If you remember early on, there was that flight from JFK to uh, West Palm Beach. It was like, like a week into the cr craziness. And uh, somebody was very sick on the flight with COVID. They held the thing on the tarmac for like six hours. Then nothing. Oh, thank God. And they held them in there longer than they needed to well, be Well, what there. about those poor people on cruise ships that were Well, docked? and that's kind of what's weird because the cruise ship, I'm wondering if there's something different about the ventilation system at cruise ships or the altitude or something because uh, because everyone looks at cruise ships as the model for transmission and yet it seems like that was more than what we see out in, in the wild. Yeah, because they're disgusting normally, cruise ships. That's yeah. Everyone is, it's like the military, you go into the buffet line, you have to wash down because yes. they know how disgusting it yes. is. Yes. Humans are disgusting. So gross. So, let's watch another TikTok. Yeah. TikTok, you don't stop. I'm oh. taking a break from the dentures right now because, wow, does it hurt to have these healing ass angel bites with the dentures what? in but what? i'm going to post a video <laughs> of what they look like and what my teeth look like before i have my dentures what yeah what's an angel what angel the, i'm thinking that's what she's referring to these piercings are so called... the piercings are hurting her gums because she's not wearing dentures yeah she chose not to and but then i thought they said the dentures also hurt the dentures hurt because they're bumping up against her brand new piercings. Oh, I see. Yeah. Why does she have dentures? Well, she has actually. I did a deep dive. Yeah. And it's. I, I, I knew you you'd could say that. you'd say meth. It's not. It's a medical condition. This does not look like meth to me. No, she had a medical no. condition early on, and that is um, a filter that makes her eyes look blue like that and big. Well, I actually think those might be real glasses. Her glasses. Her glasses, yeah, but then making. I think the eyes because under. Because then you look like oh. if she, when she turns her head. You kind of see some of it, or yeah. You get oh, some distortion. Well, oh yeah, it distorts maybe. on the side there. Like yeah, right those here. are real. Those are like magnifying glass glasses. But there's a lot happening here. We got the throat tat, yeah. um, the plugs, the ears that are pulled down, the stretchy, the door knocker. There's so much going. Door on. knocker, door knocker. Yeah. What's that thing in the nose? Mm -hmm. It's called a door knocker. That's what I call it. The boring. Okay. The right, yeah, knocking boring. On the door yeah. knocker. Uh, yeah, quite a bit going on. Well, good for her. Her? 
Yeah, she goes by she, okay. she, hers. <laughs> What's your pronoun today? Oh, this guy's the best. Okay. This one's for you. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, random, but ever been like doing crystal for like a good amount of time? Couple days, whatever. And then no matter what the fuck you do, whatever you pick up, you just fucking drop it. And then you go to pick it up again and you fucking drop it again. Ugh. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I just thought of that. So relatable, right? I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I hate it. God. I wonder if he's getting neuropathy or something. It's neuropathy really issues. <laughs> Maybe he needs that to masturbate. Not something, uh, that's not something brother. I would go. <laughs> it's like he has a uh, chronic idiopathic demyelinated polyneuropathy. <laughs> but do you just CIDP? Think, that's do, called. Would you think just doing drugs? You can do. You can get that from uh, nitrous. Oh, I used to whip it in, in college. Yeah, you can Those get those fun. things like CIDP and Guillain-Barre and stuff from that. Oh shit! Like twenty years later, or in the moment. In the moment. Okay, Sorry. Come, all good. <laughs> <Clean slate. laughs> so, but do you, because you've ever done drugs and, and like the next few days you're kind of spun out and you kind of. I can't smoke a cigar without that happening uh, to me. I'm a, I was oh. called a lightweight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, I wasn't into meth, but you know, after you party, you do drugs the next couple of days. And you weren't into it. You just did it. No, yeah. No, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I just tried it once in high school to get sure. through the SATs. Big uh, fucking deal. Oh, it would help. Uh, it helps you focus. Yeah. I don't like drugs. I don't. Oh, I could tell. I don't. No, I'm serious. I was very <laughs> experimental. Yeah, because you hated them. Because like, you hated them. Here's the deal. They took out the SAT and ACT from the UC I know, it's crazy. School. How I are you going to? I don't know. Maybe just on gender and race? I guess because... What's your gender? Are you non-binary? But, but here's the deal. The, the, the school, the, all the high schools and things are so different in terms of their grading and their rigorousness and their competition. Yeah. And how do you... Pff, you got to quantify intelligence. Uh, How the fuck? I don't know. I Look, I didn't do well on the SAT. I'm telling you one of the big problems with uh, the way stuff is breaking out all over this country is there's no, no leadership and yeah. I mean, none. none. And so that same thing was happening on college campuses where the, they just wouldn't do their job. They would just let mm -hmm. violence break out. It's like, hey, man, they got to express themselves. It's like, that's the <laughs> same people. Right. Same people. Those college administrators and those so-called leaders in the government that... Uh, I, I don't understand. I, I they, they seem to have not an understanding of humans and society and how yeah. how it's always and always will worked. But we'll see. They will learn. Fuck, man. Yeah. What's yeah. happening? Well, what's going what on is here? This? You're gonna like Raccoon. this. Raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Found out Willow's a girl. Um and we've gotten pretty close. She's bonded with me pretty well even in this short time um I found a safe place for her I'm gonna take her there and know she'll be alright so okay. thanks what everyone. is he crying about? I'm trying to figure it out well we found out Willow's a girl Willow's a raccoon for those of yeah, you yeah and, and it looks it's a cute raccoon I'll grant you that but raccoons are vicious no oh they, later they're brutal they'll yeah. ravage your face and yeah, give you yeah, rabies yeah. <laughs> what's going on behind him there by his right ear <laughs> they're Rorschach tests oh no I don't know it looks like comic strips or something <laughs> that's like where you're focused like superheroes <laughs> and there's a lot going on with this dude but I don't understand any of it and does he have what's 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 going on like, like he has a collar underneath his collar like he has oh, a skin no, that's, that's hair i think that's a hair and shadowing and he's also severely he doesn't exercise so his body is blobby and oh. uh, kind of a blobby amorphous oh, do you've seen more with him before being. no no <laughs> just the raccoon saga oh. i felt so he i think he found the raccoon and he's trying to find a home but isn't the home for a raccoon in your trash can yeah just, you just put him in your backyard and he'll be fine <laughs> that's where our raccoons live <laughs> i know do you guys I have know. where you were no no, you, but I've yeah. I've lived in your when, former neighborhood, and when I lived you in have? your neighbor, well, where you live, yes, I did for a short time. What? Mm -hmm. it's crazy. I'll tell you, I was I was I broke up with a boyfriend, and my friends helped me. They I moved in with my friends who had a lovely house uh, in that kind area. of your area. Wow! And there were raccoons every everywhere, night, everywhere, in the trash, and, and the coyotes, and the deer, <laughs> There's a lot and of shit the... out there. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. So we have the lights, so the cameras that get act motion activated, so we get a whole. Nature you to see show the night every show. night, <laughs> <laughs> the Wild Kingdom. Oh, it's like the yeah, African it's a full desert television program. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> well, they're essentially like they eat garbage. Raccoons yeah. are not they're, your pets. They're foragers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and they're angry and they're pissed and they're and they're <laughs> they fight. They fight amongst themselves <laughs> even. Yeah. They're and shitty. they take your and they take your grass and roll it up. Have you ever seen them do that? No. Oh, if you have any of that, that you know, they used to put gar the grass down. Yeah. Like, they will just, they will roll it up like a carpet to eat the bugs underneath. Oh, how smart. Yeah. How smart. And you cannot get them to stop. They're as soon as you dicks. lay it out and hammer it down. <laughs> we, had, we were hammering it down with like metal spikes and stuff. Then roll it up again. La la la, their yeah. little fingers. Yes, the little paws yeah. and fuck with your hands and stuff. So gross. Yes. Oh, she's back. Sorry, they're back. Okay. They're back. Now remember we've I, seen her with them before? Them before. I. This is for all oh, the yeah, people. Oh yeah, I remember them. I remember them. She's, yeah, they've yeah. been getting so many questions. No, she, they're actually helping me. About trans Remember mask. last time when we talked to them, we yeah. heard that I just felt like, okay, I'm, I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it too. Okay. But here's another issue that they They've been getting okay. a lot, a All lot right. of questions uh, lot. about. Okay. Hey, so a friend during our Zoom call posed a really great question, and I kind of wanted to talk about it here. Um, my friend asked, uh -oh. can you be transgender and non-binary, or do you have to be one or the other? And I thought that was a really great question for people who may not know. <laughs> I myself am transgender and non-binary. For me, that means I transitioned out of what society deemed me at birth. I use hormones and have had top surgery. So my identity stems as being both trans and non-binary because I'm not a man, but I'm still transitioning away from being a woman. Um, I know non-binary folks who identify as non-binary and trans, and I know folks who are non-binary that don't identify as trans. Um, I really think it's how you perceive your gender and what makes you feel heard. Um, so uh, yeah. Okay. Have you ever read Kierkegaard? Of course. <laughs> Where they turn into a bug? No. Oh, no, that was no, uh, that was Kafka. Kafka. <laughs> Kierkegaard, yes. Uh, I, either or. Let me tell you. Either or. Kierkegaard was easier Leap to understand than this page. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kierkegaard well, is probably the most the hardest to understand, the hardest yeah. most difficult dense text. Yeah. That was easier than understanding what this yeah, person is. Yeah, and I was just thinking the whole time I just kept I'm I'm happy for them. Yeah. They should yeah. they should what enjoy. Else? But for some reason I was thinking if Einstein's mind was preoccupied with this, <laughs> I, I wonder if he would have figured out relativity. I know. There's so much space occupied. Yeah, it's a lot. As opposed to so much going on in the in the world. Yeah. And that person, they are good. That's fine. But I, it's I, a lot. you have a lot to solve in this well, world. Well, and what's interesting too yeah. is I find the need to label. Like, um, I don't know what that is. I'm, well, I'm just saying. Labeling like, to not label. Is that right? Oh, 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 right. We're There's not. There's a lot of language policing going on these days. Gotcha. A lot. Yes, I heard Jane Fonda on. She goes, "I'm I'm behind the the African American, the Latinx, and the Dutch community." And I turn it on. I go, "What the fuck is a Latinx?" Mm -hmm. And he goes, "It's the transgenders and the genders inside of the Latin community." I'm like, "Oh come on, and, we and know get, what she means." And, and you get um, punished if you don't keep up with the language. I know. So it's look. I would just urge people to look at previous. Um, times of history where language has been an issue oh i agree you mean the communist era perhaps the russian yeah 1984 a little book by george orwell double plus good language yes oceana i know i it's, know it's a, little, it's a little frightening when you when you actually look at history i agree but now it's it's not the government policing it's people policing I know. other people I in know. fact yesterday when the right was uh, Alex de Tocqueville's uh, point, which was we have all these freedoms guaranteed in our laws, but none of it can be practiced because we, in fact, are so tough on each other that we we won't allow any freedom of speech. Or this is 1822. He said that. Yeah. Oh shit! I got to uh, read that one. Let me do an email here. Uh, I'm 25 year old male, and I believe I'm sabotaging my intimate relationships. Uh, I feel dissonant about my hypersexual behavior. Dissonance. Uh, my sex addiction, whether it be intercourse with my female partners or masturbating to porn, I often get strong urges to bust. That would make you a male. <laughs> often this urge, it feels like it consumes me and uh, is all that is on my mind. Again, so far, normal biology. <laughs> Check. Yeah, sometimes the desire makes me feel guilty or like I'm not focusing enough on energy and non-sexual aspects of my relationship. Uh, still normal. The addiction to be sexually stimulated feels unhealthy. How can I begin to unpack this issue, find solutions? Uh, I did not hear anything about addiction here at all, period. Oh, wow. Uh, I heard that you have maybe a high sexual desire that may or may not be biological, it may be psychological, and that you have all kinds of mixed feelings about it. 
and, and all that sort of lack of alignment with who you are and what your biology is, maybe that's really the issue you got to talk to a psychologist about. Mm. Um, you know, because you're everything you're talking about, un unless you're having consequences from your behavior, I, I don't see like if you're that, that would be the addiction part. The addiction so part and define, progression. Yeah. Addiction is always progression in spite of consequence. Progression. You got to have the consequence. You ruin a relationship. You hurt yourself physically. You lose a job. Whatever. You have to have a consequence. And in mm. spite of the consequence, you keep going. You keep Yikes. Going. You can't stop This is it. you feeling guilty about being a male and having strong biological urges, which is crazy. He's horny. Yeah. He's horny. And so I would talk to somebody about that that you feel so funny about being normal. The guilt and shame. Oh, about remember it. we had the whole conversation about the perfect Peter? Yes. My husband is a perfect Peter. Great. Uh, I prefer circumcision. I think uncircumcised looks weird. She's... How how a penis, what is it, phobia? Yeah, I'm trying to think. How dare a you? Penis. A penis. <laughs> penis ableist, or, uh, phobia, pre, trans. Prepubist or something. <laughs> Prepubist. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, children, my children will not be subjected to genital mutilation. Ideal is probably so then he, she doesn't like wait. Oh, it, she doesn't like uncircumcised. Okay, got it. Oh. Uh, ideal is probably average length or slightly uh, maybe like seven inches, which is above average. If there's a curve, it should only be slight. <laughs> Otherwise, it can feel weird during sex and not hit the G spot. So you got to become a contortionist to get off. I don't want to be too thick because she has all these what criteria. What are you talking about? The yeah. criteria for her perfect Peter. Oh. Uh, unlike Christina, I like bigger balls. <laughs> okay. She likes them big and sloppy. <laughs> Uh, a huge factor uh, I, as well. I think pubes aren't a huge factor as long as it's not hidden in a bush. Biggest issue is the skin of the penis. If it's rough or blotchy colored, it's not pleasing to the eye. Oh my Smooth God. skin that has pretty even color. That's what makes it perfect. Okay. So, so your perfect <laughs> Peter was not did not have did not exfoliate his penis. It, it was not an important part of that. No. no. Uh, it's a genuine review from an honest person here, but I also think most of the importance of a good looking dick, which is a nice term. Uh, is the confidence of the show, not like a dick pic, just be proud of what's going on and how it's used are major factors. Shocking there. People with vaginas usually don't prefer bigger. We prefer it to be average and a person use it wisely. <laughs> Keep them high and tight. Um, again, Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard, yeah. what? <laughs> another, I don't know. Another, now, yeah. let me ask you this, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Are there variations on a woman's vaginal depth? We don't Sure, oh yeah, it. all kinds of, yeah, all kinds of. Differences, sure, and different places where the the cervix can be long and flat, and round, or long and pointy, or it can be a long and pointy sure, cervix. Sure, sure, But they look like Werther's originals in your vagina. Like a what? A Werther's candy. One oh, time. Oh, Werther's candy, but they can also look a little bit like. Um, oh boy. Go ahead uh, and Google you, abnormal you, cervix. You, well, just to said uh, pro, how about elongated cervix? Let's Why look, would at, it be, look at elongated cervix. Would that be due to? That's burn? normal. No, 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 it's normal. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there it is. There's an elongated one. Oh. See, they just kind of stick down in there a little further. No big deal. And that would cause um, some uncomfortability not during really, sex. Not really, not necessarily. Women. You don't really notice. You might hit, think you're hitting something, and men usually feel a sense of uh, purpose and prowess if they're... Yeah. Eh, it's really nothing to it. Okay. I think so, they're really talking about the elongation during pregnancy. Wait, so how deep is the average vagine? Um... I mean to the cervix? Yeah. Well, you know, when the doctor does the, yeah. we're hitting it with the finger length, essentially. That's where yeah. the cervix is. Well, he goes and, real deep into mine. Well, and then then we're going to the uterus and feeling the uterus yeah. and stuff too and the ovaries and other things. Yeah, because when he checked me for like childbirth, I was like, all right, you darn. Like he was all the way. Yeah, well, you got to get, get around everything there and see what's going on. <laughs> see where the head of the cervix, I mean, some, something far bigger is about to come out. Come out. It's, I know. It's, <laughs> I know. 10 centimeters. I mean, that's a lot to dilate to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's unfathomable. Yeah. God. Okay. Wait, have you ever examined a woman's vagine? Has that been part of your oh, practice? A, a billion times. A billion? I mean, like thousands like of times. Like when? Thousands In your of... general practice? Yeah. Wait, you can well, first I did that? a gynecology rotation and training. So oh, I delivered right. like 20 babies too. Oh. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I, we do spectrum exams and stuff. It's that like doesn't part affect... part of routine screening. If someone wants me to do it, I do it. And does it affect your drive, your sexual drive? No, it's not anything No, you don't that. start no. to go no. like, oh, bully. <laughs> <laughs> you see enough of those, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I would no. imagine looking at D's all day long, and then I come no home, because I'm like, it, the, hmm. the inside. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you take the cervix and you yes. you, you flip it up and you open the thing. You flip it up. Well, you you, the you cervix? catch it. You show me a speculum. I know a speculum. And, and, it goes like this. It has a little lip. It has a little lip. Yeah, but it also yeah. has a lip on it, so you get under the cervix, oh. so you can lift up and see around. I hate yeah. when they fuck with your see? cervix. Oh. It's see how it's longer worse. on the bottom. Isn't there a better see? solution than doing it old school like this with the speculum? Not and really, because you've got to get because you got to get you got to see it and you got to scrape it. So. I know it's, it's the good. worst. It's all good. I hate pap smears. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see another TikTok. TikTok. You make you happy again. <laughs> again. <laughs> I've, you lost me on the cervical lip. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a perfect penis. I've been looking in all the stores uh -oh. and I cannot find my doo-doo wipes. I repeat, I cannot find my doo-doo wipes. I can't find my doo-doo wipes. <laughs> Deal breaker. Like she's your perfect girl. But I'm she makes thinking, TikToks I'm like that. I'm just thinking when your sons are 18 and bring her home. Oh fuck! How's that gonna go? I don't know. How do you deal when you're when your Everything's kids? Everything's been good. Really, I mean, everybody's been good. Yeah, good Aces, people. Aces, they brought home winners. Mm -hmm. What if one of your sons brought that home? Uh, I'd bite a hole in my goddamn lip. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> mm. and uh, as usual, I feel bad for her. Yeah, I always feel bad, but the amount of anger that's behind all that is is unpalatable, yeah. as they say. It's a lot. Just listening to the latest episode, I'd like to offer my two cents for me the perfect size penis. Is that's everyone still six, hung up on? Yes. I've been getting so many emails. Well, about. because you, right? You, you, six the, inches. The that's topic, the perfect listen, one. Listen, the topic of a perfect Peter. I've never. I'm, I'm older. I've never heard that discussed. Oh really? Perfect. Yeah. The idea of there's a like a like, an ideal. Yeah. Well, in my mind, yeah, not in everybody. I know, but you subjective. have it. You yeah. had that. No, I do. That was, it's the that golden was, painter. And that yeah. was <laughs> striking. <laughs> He's in there. <laughs> For me, the perfect size, six inches, about four inches thick. Yeah. Since I avoid just both four vaginal inches. and anal sex, I don't want them too big. Four inches Wait, around. That... Which four inches. No, that's way bigger. Get, yeah. Give me a tape measure. Uh, best sex I ever had was a guy with nine inches and very thick. Ooh. However, it was not due to his size. He was into tantric sex, controls ejaculation, gave me a little toy. I didn't, I didn't, blah, blah, blah. All right, perfect, Peter. Another, <laughs> another um, um, yes. How do you feel about males doing like oh my tantric God, another one. sex? You I know, nothing. people get real hung up on uh, Tantric sex is just delayed ejaculation, just learning to control your orgasm. Yeah, do you think guys that practice that are bullshit? Like, do you kind of feel like it's a little bit of bullshit? Uh, ask Josh. What about? <laughs> he's, he's an expert, evidently. Is he? Oh, right, well, right, right. By default. Yeah, I think some guys don't ejaculate easily, and for them, they're practicing tantric sex. You know? <gasps> That's a really great yeah. slant for mm -hmm. Josh Potter. Mm -hmm. is you that can just say, I'm into tantric. I like that. Okay, yeah. what about circle jerks? Would you ever do one? No. 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 Uh, perfect Peter, six inches, straight, erect. One is circumcised and regular, clean-looking size head. I've been with multiple uncircumcised penis, not as attractive looking. Hmm. Uh, amount of girth feels better than a thinner penis, but not too thin. It's a lot. Yeah, next. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> by Felicia. Listen. Karen. What, Karen's had Karen's so many uncircumcised. Is she from like the UK or something? Because no, that's European it's generally. Uh, it's L-A-U-R-Y-N. That seems a little maybe. Yeah. All right, let's let's do another, let's do another uh, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> no, Come here, on. let's uh, let, we, we got some good voice. All right, give voice me a voice. voice, voice, voice. voice. All right, let's do it. Okay, mommy, I'm ready, mommy. Hey, Doctor Drew, this is Kristen. I was calling with a question while you were doing your COVID nineteen updates. Your lovely wife Susan spoke up that she had had either an anal bleeding or something up back there. Maybe it was oh, electrolysis. Anal I wanted to understand how it felt, why, where, um, what drove that decision. And um, just because I'm kind of curious. Thank you very much. Have well, a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think she was talking about waxing. Anal. Oh, anal waxing. Yeah, she's done the waxing thing, but that's it. Yeah, I've so. never done it personally. I've, I've never waxed my genitals. I've waxed my legs as a teenager, and that was so excruciatingly painful that I cannot fathom putting doing that to my junk. Like mm, I'm a shaver mm, mm, and mm. I can get in there, eyes closed, I do the undercarriage very fast. I'm in and out. <laughs> Ninja. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't need to wait. What's know. the sound again you make? <laughs> <laughs> and I can shave my bee hole too. That's from years of experience. Well my wife does the whole waxing thing. So, wow. Yeah, so good for her. Yeah. And uh, see she, the pain for beauty. Yeah. Uh, all right, another one. Yeah, hi, 
Hi, uh, my name's Paul. Uh, you're calling from New Jersey. Uh, I had a question for Dr. Drew, um, a recovering drug addict, and um, I had uh, problems, extremely low testosterone levels, and I believe it's because of medication. I'm looking for a way forward. Uh, I've been clean for almost eight years now. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate some uh, help. Um, <laughs> so the deal is uh, opiates really drive testosterone way, way, way down. Uh, and sometimes people on them for long, high doses for long periods of time, it stays kind of permanent. Uh, oh. And then you get on psychotropic medications or if you're on Suboxone or something, the same, same, same thing. So uh, that is a time for testosterone replacement. I mean, it's a, it's a well, it's a clear reason for low testosterone, a clear indication to bring it back up to normal. So you do want to talk to your doctor about testosterone replacement. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, these emails are quite, uh, <laughs> <laughs> love the show. You both are great. My wife and I have five kids. My wife and I are both 45. She's worn out at nights because the girls always gravitate towards her. Mm. So we end up having a quickie every few days in the morning before work. She almost never climaxes anymore. Hmm. Says it's no big deal because I want to enjoy it more than my, because, but I want her to enjoy yes. it more than myself. Yeah, for men, this is an important thing. Yes. We want your partner to feel satisfied. Yes. And, and part of the reason we do that is we can't imagine being okay if, With not. without a climax. Yeah. Uh, so we just assume it's not okay. Even though oh. women, it is different. Uh, this has caused me to not be confident anymore, losing erections. So there's a weird disconnect, even though we are still having sex regularly. So Christina, what did you... What? Oh my gosh, because I'll tell you that like after we had... Our first son, I think that's what happens. Like women get so worn down by babies that I was just like, let's just go perfunctory. And you know, yeah, you forget that like sex can be pleasurable. It can be nice. I don't know how old your children are. Uh, 21, 19, oh. 17, <sighs> seven and four. Okay, so you've so got the spectrum. Like, I mean, listen, is that four year old? Is that well, seven? Oh, that... The other thing, she may be getting perimenopausal or that's, something. I that's mean, what it, I was gonna say. Yeah. Also, a reason I, I didn't enjoy sex for a while is because after my first episiotomy, the, um, it was sewn up incorrectly, I think, yeah. and it was painful. Ugh. Ask her if it's pain. Is it painful? It could be a medical thing. She's yeah. perimenopausal. It yeah. could be hormonal. It's a million yeah. things. And doctors do not pay enough attention to the perimenopausal stuff. I mean, just a How little bit she, of- How old is she, 45? 45. God, I'm going to be 44 in two weeks. Uh, Am I going to start? What's going to happen to me? I turn into a werewolf? No. My hair grows? <laughs> my no. beard grows? But just make sure if you start feeling like tired or depressed or I think check the check the testosterone you know testosterone and estrogen can just a little bit can really really help women and oh, okay. they're ignored they're just oh you must be depressed honey you karen you must be depressed yeah. <laughs> and so they put you on antidepressants when oftentimes it is the hormones so i would need estrogen more estrogen yes and testosterone people Anti. leave out the testosterone yeah cool man yep. well yep. i am i do like to have my breasts but i don't like my penis so i am converting to trans mask that would be perfect to get testosterone. Are you gonna be they again? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm converting. When you when you were I, gosh, were you got a goth for you like they? No, no, no. I wasn't. I was strictly a woman. Okay. I was Hey, let's take a little break so I can tell you about our friends at Embark. Of course, these guys, uh, whether you have a new pup or an old dog, it's all good at Embark. Embark breed and health test is the key to unlocking your dog's unique breed, the mix, and also the genetically informed health needs, so you can help your puppy or your old guy live his or her best life. Embark can identify over 350 breeds, types, and varieties, and screen for over 175 genetic health conditions to help your vet provide the best care for your dog. And over 50% of dogs are either at risk or a carrier for genetic diseases, whether they're a pure breed or a mix, and Embark can give you a leg up when it comes to understanding and knowing their health history. We do this for people too. We do the genetic screens. We do this for our dogs. Plus, every dog that gets tested helps contribute to their research in discovering and treating new genetic diseases in dogs to extend the lives for all dogs. They're partnered up with Cornell University, of course, and they have geneticists on staff to help talk you through your results. This is a big deal. They have stellar customer service. And this summer, Embark has a limited time offer. It is just for our listeners. I've done this. I recommend it. It was a relief to figure out that our dog did not have any genetic risks and to really understand what his breed was. It was really kind of cool. So this summer, Embark has this special offer for our listeners. Go to EmbarkVet.com, E-M-B-A-R-K-V-E-T.com. Use promo code Drew, not Dr. Drew, just Drew, and you got $50 off your dog breed and health kit. One more time, that is EmbarkVet.com, promo code Drew to get $50 off, EmbarkVet.com, promo code Drew. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, this lady in my neighborhood, I've seen at Starbucks several times. She has a medium-sized notebook. She writes in it 
while occasionally looking up and talking to herself. Yeah. The writing is so small that she can write four or five lines within what would normally be one line of writing. She's generally calm and not too loud. If she talks, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what her diagnosis might be. That is sort of schizophrenic. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> yes. Schizophrenia takes a lot of different little, weird little forms, but uh, when people are talking to themselves, that's usually, usually a thought disorder. Uh, um, Peaches has bugs in pussy. <laughs> Have you seen this? I think Nadav names these clips and uh -huh. he's really a genius at it. Oh, I remember Peaches. Yeah. Y'all, I was having sex this morning. <laughs> oh. Huh? After we was done, some of the white bugs that be crawling down on me was on him and some of them was in the bed and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he was like, what's going on? I said, I don't know. <laughs> what? What? Some of the white bugs that were on her vagina. White bugs? Got on her partner's vagina. White bugs? I mean, partner's penis. Yeah, and, and on the bed, and she thought it was really funny. Look at those fingernails. Yo, the fingernails are definitely an indicator of what? I don't know. No hygiene. Not doesn't work as a secretary typing. Can't do shit with those <laughs> nails. I, I mean, poor thing. Bugs? Shh, coochie bugs? What kind of bugs white would you bugs? have? White bugs? What you were saying? You know what? Oh, she thinks that's funny. Ooh, I, I don't know what to say. What are the bugs? Is it I is it imagine. crabs? What do... the, uh, crabs are not white. Oh, uh, crabs are little black things. Little. Oh really? Yeah. I've never had them. Yeah. I hear you can get them from communal sweat lodges no oh there were bed bugs is that what she was saying no I she said white know. bugs I, I, I don't white know. i can't think of anything white other than like maggots uh i mean right your vagine? Oh. i don't know why she would oh god i can't do it no put it white bugs in vagina because that's where it came from come on now yeah come on the dog use on. your fucking brain white bugs on uh, the all, on her. It's all I, the... you know what though i'm gonna say in her pubic hair. I still feel like it's it's jumping off. It might be in her pubic hair. Well, then it's got to be. Uh, but lice don't, the pubic lice don't, they're very slow. Ooh, what's that? That's dental worms. Oh, my God. Oh, my life. Thank Mouthful you. Mouthful of maggots. Throw up. Well, then they get maggots in the mouth. Maggots. So you're thinking maggots. Maybe she has a wound down there. Maybe. That's not being. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. TikTok is a horrible place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where is I that go. TikTok? Yeah. Okay. Was it? No, no, sorry. No, that's just peaches. That's uh, just people. Uh, Pe didn't we like peaches at oh. one time? Wasn't she funny? The teachers She's peaches. always been this crazy. Okay. Peaches. Garbage reviews. Oh, and I also like to check in on Tony, Tony oh. Johns for okay. you. Something's All right, Tony going Johns. on Let's with see Tony. Tony. Johns. Tony Johns. He's my favorite, by the way. I'm, I love Tony. Do you remember him? He's like, play girls and play boys. Ha <laughs> ha. Take your uvas. He's just a party guy. He uh -oh. was in prison last we saw him. He uh -oh. got out of jail. Uh -oh. This is where he's at. Oh, yeah, this guy. Oh, my God. You want to fuck me in the ass? Fuck you. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Come on, fuck me in the ass, motherfucker. I need me a line of white girl. Fuck. I'm here fucking masturbating and I fucking. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. Because you can come so fucking quick. I guarantee fucking to you. And I can't fucking tell you, you will fucking come in 20 to 30 fucking seconds. It's so... Is he crying? Yeah, I'm not... What's going on with him? Like, what's that? He's Well, he's in the four-stroke gang. He's breaking? I need a fucking line of white girl. Fuck. I I'm, fucking love this fucking whore. So something's something's I, really wrong. I'm thinking wrong. manic you... psychosis. Like he's manic. And, and mm. the... the you know, this super intense and then crying and stuff. That's sort of manic -y stuff. So is he like mm. bipolar or something? But, or, or math. Math. It's hard to tell mm, the I'm difference. I'm going to go with math. Yeah, <laughs> show me more math. <laughs> that really, he he's a dude that could be really scary too. Mm -hmm. I think he's, yeah, that was kind of a bummery one. I mean, I'm usually amused by Tony. I, I generally like Tony. <laughs> he, he's going to end Something's up back wrong. In, This is how we end up in prison. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. It, you know, to me, this stuff, when these people have mental illness and drug addiction and we don't help them, it's the most disgusting thing to me that we don't have laws that let us help them. I know. They can be easily helped. It's not, a, it's not hard. I know. What should we do with him? Just give him meds? Yes. 
Yeah, I know. And he'd be, she'll be, he, believe me, that he will not be unhappy like that. I know. So. It's so tough. All right, give me another TikTok, please. I need, I need, I need some palate cleanse. <laughs> sorbet. <laughs> TikTok sorbet. TikTok sorbet. Oh, this one's great. <laughs> Spicy, so good. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? Kimchi. Cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh, like an old Russian lady. Yeah. Well, so. Nadav thinks Israeli. Oh, could be. Yep. yep this yep, is just yep. falls under the banner of like immigrant parent talks because yes. there's a few of those and they're so great. Is there is a ca is a category of immigrant yeah, parents? Yeah, for me, yeah. Like I've been. I've been finding like there's how much time do you spend on TikTok? You know every day? what? It's actually not that much because my feed is so pure <laughs> that I do it like if like I put the kids down or I'll put so one of the pure. babies down. Yeah. And then Tom will be putting so another fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the other kid down and it'll literally be five minutes and I'll be like, Oh, that one's great, that one's great, that one's it's not a lot. So the <laughs> algorithm is doing this for you somehow. Yeah. You it's yeah. learned your craziness. Yeah. Oh, is this her? What the hell? I'm a doctor now? <laughs> What is it? I don't know. This is what he told me, and I'm telling you the same thing. He told you what? That I have sciences. What? <laughs> I have sciences! <laughs> <laughs> She's so great. I love her. Email <laughs> is not in your account. I, want, I couldn't do nothing. They need to send you something. I'm actually email. like, you know how to use email. <laughs> Is that, <laughs> is that the same woman? Yeah. Almost looks like somebody different. Yeah. Oh my god! Like it's she like threw stuff at him. Yeah. It's only immigrant moms that do that shit. They throw stuff and swing at you. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. American moms do not play like no, that. No, no. They would not. You use email. And it's so and all, it's sort of more. It, and to be fair, it's sort of more Eastern European stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just any immigrant mom. <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean, there are there are peaceful immigrant moms. Oh and, yeah, and that's true. I've heard of these. Yeah, I've never not met sure. one. Not sure that's real. It's kind of bullshit. <laughs> I remember going to like American people's houses growing up. And American like, people's houses. Yeah, and they had like. That's how you thought about it. Yeah. Well, I grew up what? with these two. You know, my yeah, house. But my mom fed me cow brains and shit. Like we were not American. We're American Hungarian. American people's houses. How old were you? I mean, from the time I was, you know, going to school, and I remember going and like meeting the nice mom you know like carol and she's Karen. like there's tuna casserole in the fridge and i was like what <laughs> is tuna casserole first of all you know like twinkies i have twinkies and you're like what are you this is what you're looking for for your boys i sure am i sure am i'm doing it for my kids i'm a recovering addict with four years clean used to do what i called getting fucked and fucked up one okay. night in my perilous I mean, journey of addictive uh, addiction i boned two guys in the same night who were roommates First guy had a small dick. Second guy had a large dick. Needless to say, both dicks were terrible. Hmm. Oh, she's back to what's the nice average and oh, perfect for God thing again. That's sake. all we've got now. Cause look what you did, Karen. Here, Fucking... we got we got some voicemails. <laughs> all right, give me a voice. Dick Fucking right, Goldilocks. She's one is too small, one yeah. is too big. Goldie dicks. No, Goldie <laughs> hey, Cox. Goldie Cox. There we go. Hey, oh. hey Dr. Drew. Uh, big fan. I have a sort of a bizarre anatomy question. Uh oh. A couple of months back, I was relieving myself mm -hmm. in the bathroom, mm -hmm. taking a whiz. Okay. And I looked down at my stream, and like right at the base where it was coming out of my dick hole, <laughs> there was yeah. like an anomaly. Like I don't know how it was a bizarre little bit in my stream. And I realized that about an inch worth of a hair was hanging out of my oh. dick hole. Oh, yeah. I thought it was super weird. Yeah. I uh, stared at it for a couple seconds before I started to pull it out slowly yeah did hurt a little bit coming out it was like maybe four or five inches long Ooh. it didn't hurt after that i haven't had any pain or anything but i'm curious as to how i was able to perform that i think it was one of my hairs but how did that get in my occasionally urine? a hair will grow to somebody there. Me. look at your wreath uh, your wreathful hair let's see if we can get a little bit of that stop it uh let's see there's let's hair see. follicles in your urethra well, there aren't and so it's usually uh there it is see it can happen um and it's usually a, a wayward kind of thing it's it's not something typical but it, also there are worms there's something called schistosomiasis there are worms again in your bladder <sighs> and it scares me that he might have had a little bit of a wormy 
Uh, but okay. What about when you're in the shower and you wash your butt and you pull a long head hair out of your butt? You ever done that? Out and of it, my butt? Yeah, like. Oh, sure, I have. Sure. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Tell me You've more. You've never pulled a long hair more. out of your butthole? Out of your asshole? Yeah. Tell, tell me more. It's the best feeling, and it's also really? the scariest thing Wh- that ever happened. It, it, oh yeah, it's a good feeling. I know it, it feels it's so, so good. good right? It does because so you're good. like you're like you wash because you wash your butt hole. I don't use a I don't use a cloth because I think that's stupid. Use I your use hand. my hand like yeah, an adult, of course. And like sometimes, yeah, like every decade, once a decade, I'll just pull out a long head hair out of my butthole. I think it's because you accidentally eat hair. Is that is that a theory that I'm working with? And then it just comes out. So you don't of your have to butt. feel like you're not plucking something. You know, it's not a pluck. It's a, it's, I've a, been, it's just a pull through. Yeah, a pull through. Uh-huh. It tickles. You're like, woo! Oh, there's that hair coming out of so my butt. So exciting. I, I'm heard? guessing that's some hair contamination of something you ate, right? Yeah. Like like somebody at some restaurant. <laughs> <his hair fell. laughs> I don't think it's. It could be yours in the kitchen. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But yeah, that makes sense to me. Although I I, yeah. I would think most hair digests in the stomach with all that acid. But okay. Sometimes well, once you got hardy hair. Once or somebody's a, hardy once hair. a de- yeah, somebody's <laughs> once a decade or so color? it happens. Did you check the color? No, you're just like woo, and then it's <laughs> done. <laughs> Come Maybe on. Maybe you could reproduce that some way. I mean, think about it. It's pretty freaking exciting. It's yeah. Ex- yeah, it's eventful. You never pull a hair out of your butt in a dog? Nope. Oh, that's a girl thing. I've had a, my friend has it, a girl. Yeah, she's really? she's admitted to it. Yeah. You'll more. see. You'll, you'll see those emails come rolling in. Oh, I please do send them again. It's drreptodark at gmail.com. I say this is a rare <laughs> unicorn we have here. Uh, okay. <laughs> but if you say so. Whatever. Uh, oh, my gosh. These emails. Here, we got a, we got a voicemail. All Let's right, voice voicemail. Message. Here we go. Voicemail. Okay, here we go. Okay. Hi, Dr. Drew and Christina, mommy. Um, a quick question for you. Um, I am a 30-year-old woman, and I have been in a committed relationship for six months and he's wonderful and my family is insane um my mom is a borderline uh undiagnosed bipolar um i have a stepdad a dad a alcoholic brother um i'm i'm struggling with boundaries and when do i bring in my relationship to my family i don't want to like keep my family too separate i it's it's the struggle. So I'm wondering, when do I get to, um, at what point is it appropriate <laughs> to introduce them to the crazy? So yeah, would love any advice. Okay. Um, All right, we'll I talk about wanna... it. Yeah, we'll talk about How it. How long has she been dating? Did she say? I think she said six months. Six months. So uh, she has no obligation to share him with her family. No. Right? Uh, uh when did you bring Tom to see your crazies? Fuck. I mean, it was gradual. <laughs> <laughs> like One at a time? One at a time. Yeah, you make the rounds. Like, my dad was one story. And then, like, meeting my what did, mom. What did he think? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my dad dropped the M-bomb, like, the first time he met my dad. <laughs> and, like, thankfully, here's the deal. Like, I also could never date just, like, cracker-ass American men because they don't understand crazy immigrant stuff right okay so i would never bring home like a waspy fucking person that wouldn't get that like that's an immigrant dad thing they're gonna (laughs) say crazy shit bro so he tommy laughed when my dad was being crazy like that and i was like okay you're in the fold like you didn't (laughs) run you're in the fold (laughs) same with my mom she was cursing because somebody at you know neiman marcus wouldn't wait on her and this fucking guy and you know he laughed but however, I protected my husband and my relationship and my marriage from my family. Meaning like yeah. my husband is my family now. Yeah. My yeah. children are yeah. the focus. Yeah. And I protect that relationship, the good in my life. Because in my case, Is that my where you family... hired the private detective to stay around him all the time? No, I don't have a private detective. <laughs> what? You said what? you hired that. said you said you have, oh, you put radar on him or no, something. No, I'm just kidding. I would a, never. Oh, uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. I just, I know where the fuck he is. Okay. Like, what are you doing? But um, protect what's good in your life. Yeah. And if this family, if your family of origin is is toxic and shitty. Right. Uh, okay. Bye, Felicia. Like you're yeah. in your own. So thing. she, I think you're. I think you, you, you. The way you did is right. You don't do it all at once. No. You bring it sort of one at a time. 
you know, and sort of expose him to it if that's important to you. <laughs> Exposure therapy. And, and, and uh, you know, you don't have any obligation to do much with the family there. No. It's just, yeah. Why do they have to know your, your man and then get but, rope him into but bullshit? But on the other side, is she's worried that seeing that family will make him run away or something. But yeah. I mean, you might as well know that, right? This is your family. You well, don't here's, want... here's the thing. Because a lot of times when you come from a messed up family, you're so afraid that you're so tainted and messed up that nobody good's going to like you. And that they're going to find out that I'm from this background and it's shameful. Mm. You're not your family of origin. You can be in therapy. You can change. Yep. You can get better. So as long as you're working to better yourself and you preface that mm -hmm. with him, like just so you know, I'm in therapy. I'm working on me. I'm yes. doing me. That's not me, dude. Right. Even though my mom has borderline personality disorder. Yeah. It, it affected me, but I'm working on what it's done. Yeah. Yes. As long as that person sees you trying to get better and try to better your life and blah, blah, blah. Here, this is in the same line. Uh, my name is Jade. I have a question pertaining toward relationships. Why is it some people get so attached to their abusive partners? Uh, even when they feel they've grown them, why can't they leave or let go? Whether it's an emotional abuse or physical, they know they don't deserve it. Why can't they just stay? This is somebody probably never been in that kind of a situation because you, you, it's, it's like a cult. You get caught in it. It's like a cult of two, the way I describe it to people. Mm. First of all, they break down your self-worth, right? Mm. They break you down till you don't believe you're worth anything to anybody else. You, they literally convince you that nobody else would have you, oh. right? And you get stuck in an idealized cycle where you're convinced that it will not happen again. They, they have an outburst. Then they come back and apologize and tell you it's only because they love you so much that I, you, you, it drives me crazy. My love for you is so intense that I can't stand it. I go nuts and it will never happen again. I'm sorry. And they get reunited in an idealized and intense reunion. So you get attached to the intensity, mm. right? And you get traumatic bonding to the abusive part. You get attached to the intensity in the reunion. You want to believe that it's going to be, that it'll never happen again. And yet it, of course, keeps happening. It always keeps happening. Uh, so it has multiple kind of qualities to it. You're broken down, you're into the intensity, and you're into the attachment, attached to the trauma. It's, wow, it sounds it's like stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, wow, that's interesting. They break you down. I love you. Yeah, love you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But laugh, just laugh, It's abusive, laugh. yeah. And then the laugh is the idealized it's reunion. It's abusive, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I don't do this with people. I only stand up. <laughs> well, good. You, that's the, the remnant of your family. You learned how to use it productively. Yeah. Uh, I've been surrounded my whole life by with my mom, sisters, friends, etc. I don't understand this mentality. Is it possible to even help someone to get out of there? Yes, it's, but they have to get out. It's It kind of becomes an addictive thing. The first thing is to get out, and then you start working on it. But they often go back. Again, much like cults and stuff. Well, and also uh, those women end up dead from what can end up dead. Uh, a Easily. lot of the times, dude. Easily. It's really tragic. And, and the idea, I, I remember once I kind of got the message of how bad, the, the how problematic the men are when I was talking to a young man who had had therapy for having been a domestic violence perpetrator. Oh, wow. And he was now sort of an advocate and helping other men and stuff. And he goes, yeah, he told me the story. He goes, uh, he goes, yeah, I, I really don't even think I'm ready yet. I mean, I've been in therapy, but it happened once. I threw a girl, went through a door, and I had never really touched him before that. But when I did that, I thought, oh, my God. So he had one episode, one outburst, domestic violence. I go, how long have you been in therapy? Five years. Wow. And, and, and I'm still not good. <laughs> well, I thought, wow. oh, yeah, it takes a while. You don't, want to, you don't want to keep that guy around women in the meantime. <laughs> no, if, you if, do you know, not. Right? So it takes... That's true. Yeah, yeah. I know I had a friend from high school. Her sister was killed by her boyfriend. A couple Ugh. just murdered. And I grew up with the, these two women. And she was young, 28 years old. And in her own bathroom, they found her. And he beat the shit out of her. Oh and my it's God. like, oh. And you, what do you do? It's just terrible. You get them apart. You, you get, get them, them apart. apart. But it takes what it takes for that to happen. But People, the woman has to get treated too, no? Yes. I mean, how did she? Well, Why first of all, she, she has PTSD it? and trauma from getting into that. And then what set that up so she doesn't get in that repeat cycle again? Yeah, fuck. My goodness. Terrible. On that happy note, let's uh, <laughs> see garbage reviews. <laughs> garbage. Where was that from? Show me so, garbage. It's a family Show feud. Show me. <laughs> but oh. up to this is Tommy John. Oh. And what do I find in the ashtray on top of a garbage can? A goddamn donut. Okay. And? Oh, he's going to eat it. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, boy. He looks like the meat-eating guy. It's the raw like, meat guy. Yeah, yeah. Or like Kevin Smith in the 90s, kind of. Oh, okay. This is gross. 
stale cigarette ash on the frosting. Ugh. Disgusting. 2.2 2 out of 10. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my God. This so is. What are the blowbacks medically from yeah. eating food out of an ash? Um, probably not as much as you would think. I mean, you know How what I mean? It's possible. I mean, You're, what are you going to get? Except blew- it's only other people's stuff, right? It's whatever comes off a cigarette or a. It's lots of people's stuff there, and their hands were handling it and getting on the donut. But what else are you going to get? I, I mean, mean, it's listen, not like there's some. You, you blown my mind on poutine. Yeah, you, you told me it was okay to pee and caca on my fries and eat them. I did. Yeah, I did. Probably. There yeah. was no. Yeah. You said. What? Well, there's nothing. If he doesn't have anything to give himself, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Now you're telling me I can eat a crusty donut and a filthy ashtray and be fine. I mean, fine? It's, I worry about other humans. COVID. He can yeah, get he can get like the COVID. Rona. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Stuff like that. I mean What else? The, what else can he th- th- your malaria? I mean, what you get through your mouth, if through exposure, it's mostly viral stuff. M- meaning meningitis? Of, yeah, I get stuff like that. Yeah, I mean bad Ugh. viral infectious viral. diseases, yeah. Viral. Uh, the bacterial stuff. I mean No, it doesn't live I mean, on a crusty I, donut. Not that I can think of. Bacteria. Why is that? I guess salmonella might. I mean, you can get typhoid, but it's not here. We don't have it. But is bacteria not as resilient as a virus? Is that why? Yeah, the viruses, and and that's they can get in through our services very easily. Ugh. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I can't think of any bacterial illnesses that I. I mean. Yeah. I have a question for you. you, Is this a deal breaker? I like to play this game with Tom in your mom's house. You're with Susan. It's been 35, 35 years. Yeah. And let me she, see. Let me think. Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she goes, Drew, I love you, and I feel finally safe enough to show you. I've been keeping a shed full of my bowel movements. I jar them every day. Ah. I categorize them. No, no. Write, this would not be a deal breaker. However, what? I would fucking airlift her to a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> You, you understand there, there's a difference between a deal breaker and, oh my God, honey, you're sick. We got to help you Yeah. right now. What's what's the sickness in that? What's that? Well, it's, it's a, the it's psychotic illnesses. People will hoard their urine and their feces and things. <laughs> so I would know immediately that she needs to see a doctor and gets on some medication immediately. Immediately. Yeah. But you'd, you'd stand by your lady. Okay. Yeah. I'd see her as a sick person needs help. Okay. What if yeah, <laughs> she's 35 years, happy marriage, everything's great. Yeah. Drew, I finally feel confident and ready to show you my shed full of dollies. I collect oh. dolls and uh. I've got, here's Nancy and here's it, it Becky. Would, yeah, it would change how I looked at her <laughs> and I would keep an eye on her. I would now start to <laughs> monitor what she was doing with those dolls. Yeah. And it would be very concerning. She's just admiring because them. Then, no, because then you start going, well, what else is going on? <laughs> what else are you not telling me about? This is a pretty significant piece of your life hidden away in a shed. Yeah. What else going well, but on? But let's say she showed it to you in the beginning of your relationship. Would that have been a deal breaker? The shed full of dollies? Possibly not. Wow. Possibly not. Wow. Yeah, I would have gone, oh, interesting. Uh, keep an eye on this. But people can have fragments of themselves that are just a little unusual. Is that, what would that be, the doll collector? Uh, it, who knows? I mean, people get attached to weird... It, collecting generally is kind of a weird I, thing, right? I agree. Yeah, and, and it usually has some sort of childhood something was sort of soothing about it when they were a kid uh. that they're still attached to, right? I used to collect shells when I was a kid. Well, you're yeah. a kid. Yeah, but still, though, I mean, if I'd kept doing it, I was saying, You're a 40 year old man. Here's Michelle collection. <laughs> no, I still, I still am attached to it, though. It's a little weird. Well, that's your childhood. You're allowed yeah. to have one thing. Uh, yeah, it still yeah. feels a little weird to me. It's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> You're not like masturbating with No, yeah, no, no. That's no. weird. Nope. <laughs> that's weird. Nope. <laughs> Give me another TikTok, please. <laughs> TikTok, you don't stop. Ooh. Oh, my Why gosh. She's spinning like that, yo. <laughs> oh, I think I saw this one. <laughs> That's pretty uh, popular. Yeah, I saw that one came by. Give me another one. I can't even think. I Uh-oh. apologize Uh-oh. for looking like I got slammed in the face with a brick. Uh oh. Well, a lot of people asking why I got a tattoo on my face in the first place. Story time. It might have to be done in a couple parts. Uh-oh. Part one. Uh, I think you know the back story. Years, and years ago, <laughs> from like 2008 through 2011. 2007 through like 2011 I was a really shitty person I drank all the fucking time and uh, I went to uh, a bar one time 
out of many. <laughs> and uh, I also, at the time, played like a fuckload of World of Warcraft. Oh. I still play, but nowhere near as much. Anyway, so um, I, one of my friends was bartending and he played WoW also. And we got into an argument over who liked WoW more. And so I said, yeah, motherfucker, I like WoW so much, I'm going to tattoo that shit right on my face, my druid. And, and that's it. And there you go. And now she's my trying. My swelling has finally gone down. She's trying to have it moved. Oh, is that what that, that's, that's what the, the swelling, swelling is? Oh. Yeah. So good for her. She's trying to, you know, turn oh. over a new leaf. But it, I always find it so interesting when people are aware that they were a shitty person. I know. When, addicts frequently will say that, but they, they often think of themselves when they're in it as a shitty person too. Oh. And still can't get out of it. Right. So you have an awareness yeah. of how you're behaving. Yeah. There's an awareness that you suck. Yeah. You know, I think that's probably why so many people are mad at their drug addict or alcoholic family members, boyfriends, whatever, because you're like, asshole, you know, you're being a dick and you're still doing it. That means you have some some control some, yeah, over this. Well, some like, soul in you. Right. And and I always feel bad for the recovering people when they're they're very they're not guilt ridden, but they're very, they, they, they need to make good for, yeah. for having been a shitty person. That when, when they're in their shittiness, they do not think that way at all. It's just, no. it's just, uh, you suck, I suck, everything sucks, and therefore I might as well drink. Oof. It's, it's a, well, yeah. she's very competitive. I mean, I do appreciate it. Yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, you think you're a fan? Fuck you. I'm going to show you who's a fan. But isn't it interesting how we've talked about how tattoos are a bit of an acting out on yourself? It's <laughs> yeah. sort of the most explicit version of that we've seen in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. The On the face. And to do something so frivolous. And, and you know it's silly in the moment. And the face tattoo is usually, again, that's usually when somebody's in an altered state. <laughs> usually manic, something like that. What is going on with the Ad ankle? Uh, edema. Does yep. anybody have any idea why I would be retaining water like this? Yes, that is called pitting I edema. I woke up this morning, and this is how bad it is. Yes, you could be in. I got sunburnt uh, last week, but they had gone down. Oh. I think I'm dying. No. Nah. You can get some edema after sun, after a burn. Uh, you can get it from congestive heart failure. You can get it from liver disease. and get it from uh, kidney failure. And being very fat too, and your veins not working right. She so. sounds like she might be. She may be. And she badly be. out of shape. And maybe yeah. smoking. Drinking. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Not, yeah. not very. Uh, so it's called venous insufficiency. That's called a venous insufficiency. The veins don't bring the fluid back the way they should. Right, because when you're preggers, you, I yes. had that the first time around. I was that's out a little of shape. different too. No, no, no. That's that's some of it is venous insufficiency, but it's also the part of pregnancy is preeclampsia it gets gets a lot uh, of pain. So. That's terrible. I didn't have that thing. Yeah. But, well, this has been fun. Yeah. I feel better. Good. As you always, feel... I always feel better. We didn't talk good. much about the world today, which is probably good. Yeah. You know, we just kind of lost ourselves in silliness. That's all That's all you can do, right? I mean, look, we have no control over what's going on. You're, you're, so. you, this, all that philosophy helped you. Uh, it, tremendously. It, it, yes. It, it made you a more, uh, what's the word? Uh, there's a word for this where rational no just your e equilibrium your e equanimitas like Equi you equanimous yes, equanimity equanimity yeah, yeah trying yeah, yeah. yeah but don't, don't get me wrong i still panic on the inside like i still am very anxious on the inside but there yeah. are moments of like when i'm with you i feel better you make me feel better these guys make me feel better the studio so You're i think i'm better. happier here and, and i'm worrying about the world i'm worrying about the situation where this is not good not I good know. and i wish we would uh make it better we need to we need to do better we need to really <sighs> take care of our business here in this country, i so. know so let's move to scandinavia Ooh, that'd be interesting mm -hmm. is, that, is that where we're gonna go stockholm yeah it's very miserable though gloomy you know in the winter cold yeah okay. we gotta find a place to move if, if things don't go right i know and we keep doing this podcast from wherever we can mm -hmm. okay let, where's it nice and warm and the political system's okay and stable if you don't mind people shooting missiles at you, it'd be Israel. <laughs> go right. the dive and the dive take us there. I would love it. I heard Tel Aviv is lovely. I've heard that too. I don't want to go. There. Okay, I want to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. 
Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.